Praise God. Good morning, everybody. Wow. Nobody says nothing. All right. She said good morning. One person. One person. Glory to God anyway. Today is the day that the Lord has made, and I will rejoice and be glad in it. Glory to God. Well, welcome, Internet audience. I can't hear you guys. Y'all gotta wake up. What's up? I mean, I understand we all have challenges, but there's no reason under the sun, no reason under the sun, that you should not always be full of joy. Praise be to God. Let's go before our Father. Father God, we come to you right now in the name of Jesus. We thank you, Father God, for your love. We thank you, Father God, for your compassion. You are a good God, a gracious God, a loving God. Father God, we know that you have supplied us with every spiritual gift, every spiritual need, as well as every physical need that we'll have. Because you say you've already given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. We believe we receive them by the knowledge of your word. We thank you, Father God. We love you. We appreciate you. Now, Father God, we take this new adventure into your word. Holy Spirit, we invite you here, sir. We salute you. Thank you. Come into our, come into our mind, Father God, Holy Spirit, and, and unlock those hidden truths so that we can grab hold to those things that your word has supplied for us. We believe we receive them as of now by faith. Now, Father God, I submit myself to your spirit, soul, and body. Use my mind, use my heart, use my mouthpiece to minister your word to your people this day. And we come in with you right now, Father God, to give you all the praise, all the honor, and all the glory for every victory that will come out of today's session. We thank you, Father God, in Jesus' name. Amen. Glory to God. I want you all to turn your Bibles, turn your Bibles, Back to the book of uh, John chapter 17. John chapter 17. We kind of started this teaching last week. We started this teaching last week. Uh, and this is, uh, just in case if you do not know, this is actually the Lord's Prayer. Most people will go to Matthew chapter 6 and they'll read Our Father, which art in heaven. Well, if you read a few scriptures before that, there's the disciples said, Lord, teach us to pray. Okay, I, I, I want, I want y'all to see that yourself. Go to the book of Matthew chapter 6. I want y'all to see that yourself. I want y'all to see that yourself. Some of y'all are like, Pastor, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> Uh-oh. Here we go. Got to put these things on. <laughs> I be trying not to use them, man. Lord knows I be trying not to use them. Oh, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness, my goodness. Verse uh, 8, okay, I, I, I'm going to forget, I uh, kind of forgot to tell you this, and it's my fault, it's my fault, I'm going to say, see, national, national live internet, <laughs> I made a mistake, you have to couple Matthew chapter 6, if you, if you okay, the disciples, I hope, I'm going to open up a whole different point now, just re real quickly, Matthew and Mark were both there with Jesus, they were one of the disciples. If you read the book of Matthew and if you read the book of Mark, they both, both of them basically are coming from a different perspective of what was being said, what Jesus was taught, teaching them. Uh, just like if, if you were to take me and my wife, and we're just going to use me and her, we the same, and we was to go look at a movie, it could be the same movie. Nine times out of ten, if you ask my wife, She'll say something about the movie, and if I'll, I'll hear, I'll see the same movie, and you ask her about this, ask me about the same scene, I'll come up with a different perspective of the way she saw it. You, you feel me? 
And sometimes that, that's where people, because people don't understand perception uh, of people, they'll begin to think that the Bible will contradict itself. So, but it does not, it does not. So it's kind of coupled with Mark chapter, Matthew chapter six, as well as if I remember right, it is also Mark. Mark chapter five. Mark chapter five. Mark chapter five. And the disciples, the disciples asked the father, they said, he said, the uh, disciples said, uh, Master, teach us to pray. You can Google it on your phone. Just Google it, just put Master, teach us to pray. Yeah, you'll be able to see the, see the verse in your, yourselves. Now, but highlight them in here. So when you get to Mark Matthew chapter six, and you see this in verse uh, 8. It says, Be not ye therefore like unto them, for your father knoweth what things you have need of before ye ask him. And Jesus talking referring to what? He's talking about a need. Any kind of need that you have. Any kind of need that you have. The father knows you need them before you even ask for them. Some of y'all need to look at the verse. Some of y'all Bibles ain't even open up in here. What are we doing? Y'all just sit up here just listening to me bump my gums. Don't, don't do that. Don't do that. You need the scripture because think about it. We, all of us in the past few weeks, some of us have had major challenges. Major challenges. Some of these, some of these little bit of small challenges. I said just last week, uh, I went back and listened to the teaching earlier this morning from last week. I had to go back and had allow the Holy Spirit to put me back in that, that same mindset. If y'all don't do that, I mean, I, that's why I'm so glad for recording. So you can go back and you know, pick up back where you left off. I just, easy, 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 easy. And if I remember right, the Holy Spirit revealed to us, he said, you need to be teaching, taught these things on a consistent basis. On a consistent basis. So when the challenges do come up, the things that you have have heard, even Peter says that. He said, I like said, they said, we ought to give the more earnest heed to the things we have already heard. Why? So when the challenges do come up, you can recall back what you were taught. And then you can implement that in right in place of where the challenge is. See, some of y'all are hearing me, then you're not hearing me. Okay. Recall back. You're being taught this right now. He said, be ye therefore like unto them. That said, be not ye like the, unto them. For your father knoweth what things ye have need ye have need of before ye even ask for them. You have to already know the father knows that you have need of whatever it is that you need. And then he's supplying it through the knowledge of his word. As you sit in front of me or in front of somebody else, who's teaching you the uncompromised word of God, or when you sit down reading the Bible yourself. Holy Spirit, what does this mean? What are you talking about here? You need to have confidence that God has already supplied the need. He already knows you need the need. So when the need or the challenge comes up in your future, you can go right back to what you were taught last week on Sunday or last year on, on, on Wednesday night, or last year on, on, on Friday afternoon when you was reading the scripture. You can regurgitate that back up. And you can all say, okay, Lord, I believe, I have confidence in you, I have confidence in what your word says, and I believe my need is being met. And I say regurgitate because that's what the, the Bible calls it to meditate. If you, if you go back and look at scripture, or uh, older old scripture, the Bible says meditate the word of God. The word meditate, it means to mutter. It means to ponder. It means to regurgitate or bring back up. Oh my goodness. See, and we've been playing this religious game way too long. Sometimes I'm looking right, I ain't scared none of you. I ain't scared none of you. We've been looking at this religious, playing this religious game way too long. And then when challenges do happen, where's God at? Sitting on the throne. How come God didn't do such, such, such? It's up to you, your free will. But what if they did that? See, and it goes back to the will. 
if the person's will is not to obey God's word, it's irrelevant of what situation it's in. I know I'm not crazy. Bad things happen to good people. But we also have to know that there is an enemy out there who don't give a flip about how much of a relationship you're trying to have with God. He gonna come at you. He gonna come at you. he if he try to kill Jesus. <laughs> you definitely think he know he gonna try to kill you, steal from you, and destroy anything in your life. So back to before we were so rudely interrupted. He said that verse nine. After this manner, after this manner, the manner means uh, uh, the manner means a pattern, a, 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 a way of doing something. He says, therefore pray ye. Therefore pray who? Ye. ye. The word ye always in the Bible is a plural you. <laughs> so he's talking about you all. You. You pray this way. You pray. Our Father, which are in heaven. You pray. I want y'all to really, really see that. So, when we get on back over to the book of John, verse chapter 17, and we see the, these words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. The hour is come. To do what? Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Now this is Jesus referring to his death, and then everything that Jesus had been accomplishing when he was in the earth. It was time for God to glorify it. It was time for God to put it on center stage. Okay, I'm going to say that again. This is when Jesus was, he, his glory, God, he was saying, God, I want you to put me on center stage. Why? So that you can get the glory. I'm gonna, I'm, I'm gonna let that sink in, cause just by me teaching that right now, it, it's, it's, it's taking on a whole nother meaning for me now. We talking about we, 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 all this time we've been talking about what manifestation of what we've been believing for, right? Some of us been believing God for certain things. Say, okay, Lord, I've been doing these things. Now it ain't based on your works. It's based on what the the, 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 the plans. It's based on the purposes that God has given you in your life, and you've been obeying God's word, and you're saying, okay, Lord, it's time for you to put me on center stage. Why? So that you can get the glory. See, when God starts promoting people, when God starts promoting people, God, here, here you go, one of the main things he's going to be looking for is if as is if you are going to make sure he gets the glory out of it okay okay the word glory uh oh here we go teaching time breaking it down <laughs> the word glory in this instance come on come on come on come on come on, come on, come on. The word glory, glorify. <laughs> it is the Greek word daxo. I mean, do x do d o x a z o, d o x a z o, daxo. <laughs> it is the root word. <laughs> it is the root word to render esteem. In wide application, to render esteem, like self-esteem, like if you have a uh, confidence, you, know, you build yourself up, to have confidence in yourself, it is to put yourself on on a, on a high level. 
Notice it says to render esteem. John the Baptist said it like this. It is time for me to decrease, but him to increase. When you start getting promoted, things start happening in your life. And you see the vision come. You, you see the vision starting to come to pass. Lord, I render all these accomplishments unto you. Oh my goodness, right here. <laughs> I render it unto you. Think about it. Some people, there's nothing wrong with having confidence in yourself. Please hear me very carefully because it's, it's different from having self-confidence in yourself and it's a whole nother level of having arrogance and thinking it's you who did it. I'm going to say it again. You can be smart. You can be intelligent. You, you can be crafty. You can be gifted. But when you start trying to pull these accolades to yourself, now you're in arrogance. It's a big difference. Like me, I'm going to walk in the confidence of what God's Word says. You should be walking in the confidence of what God's Word says. Thus, therefore, when the manifestations do start coming to pass, you say, okay, Lord, you get the glory. It wasn't me. If it was not for you, Lord, think about it. If it wasn't for the Lord, we all still be in hell. We all still be on our way to hell. If Jesus had not come, uh, I've seen movies, what if Jesus would have came in today's time? You know, those are, those are cute, good movies, and I, I kind of like them. But God, uh, I personally believe that God brought Jesus in a time, because in a time where it was more hectic <laughs> than it is for us now. And you might say, how is that with all the wars going on, all the famines and sicknesses? There were famines and sicknesses at that time. You know, we, we think AIDS might have just showed up. AIDS might have just showed up, uh, you know, back in the uh, late, late 60s, early 70s. No, I personally believe AIDS showed up, yeah, right during Jesus' time, and there was no name for it. They just called it a fever. If you go look up Old, Old Testament scripture and you, you see what people got a fever, it was, fevers kill people. You catch a fever at that time, there was no Tylenol. There was no ibuprofen. They didn't know nothing about giving somebody an ice bath. The people just laid there with a fever. And they, some, a lot of them died. There was no cure for it. Even now, if you let a fever go on too long, it will kill you. So, with that being said, <laughs> Jesus showed up at a time where it was, I personally believe it was much, he didn't have uh, cars to get him back and forth. He either rode on a horse, he either rode on a donkey, or he walked. Sandals. I know, wet sandals. No, I ain't doing no sandals. <laughs> no sandals. Thank God. They ain't had no socks on their feet when it was cold at night time. They had to put a blanket over their feet. Me, I go get a couple pair of socks and I'm happy. <laughs> It's like a convertible sock. <laughs> a convertible blanket. <laughs> I'm not going to put all of my people on doing all that stuff. But anyway, Jesus came in at a tough time. Tough, tough time. And think about it. When somebody killed you at that time, they shot you with a bow and arrow, which is like a, a, you know, a long-range bullet or whatever. Or they had a knife or a sword, and they stuck you eye to eye. <clears throat> Just dead. Y'all seen the movie Gladiator? <laughs> Some of y'all have. Or what well, movie is that? The movie 300 or the movie Troy? Either one of them. I ain't never saw Troy, but I've heard about it. No, they just, they just key right now. Tough. Real, real tough. But the word glory, back to it again, <laughs> it means to, to render esteem with a wide application. Full of, I mean, full of glory, honor, and magnify. Lord, you are it. You are it. Now think about what Jesus is asking here. He said, Lord, I want you to put me on center stage. Why? So I can put you on center stage. There you go, sister. That's right. Oh, Father, 
glorify thou me with thine own self. Uh oh, uh oh. With thine own self. Think about that statement right there. Let's finish the verse. Let's finish the verse. Thine own self with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. Look at the verse. Look at the verse. Before the world what? Was. Underline that right there. Y'all have heard me say, if you go back and read Genesis chapter 1, verse 1, it says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. If you go look at it, it doesn't say heavens. It doesn't say earths. It said heaven and earth. Singular. Heaven and earth. That first verse right there, if you was to go look here in the book of John, chapter 1, just hold your finger right there, because we're we, we teaching that. We're teaching that. John, chapter 1, verse 1, it says, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So now we pick up a different aspect of who God is. Word. Notice it's capital W. Not lowercase w. Not like uh no no spell me a word like dog, D-O-G. It's not like a regular old word. It, this word is capitalized. And when you when you capitalize something, think about it. Uh when you capitalize in words, what does this word have to be? A what? A noun. It's a noun. No, y'all come on, English uh, English professors are here. It's a noun. When do you capitalize words? When it's a person, a place, or thing. That's right, sis. Person, place, or thing. Even some ideas. Even some ideas. So when you catch the word word here, it says, in the beginning was the word. It's referring to a person, a place, or thing. A person, place, or thing. Then it breaks it down even further. And the word what? Was with God. And the word was God. So now we pick up a different aspect of God. Word. Y'all see that? Word. Verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. Uh-oh. Talking about two beginnings here. What beginning? When God was by himself and he hadn't created nothing yet. There was no planetary systems. There was no Star Wars. There was no Guardians of the Galaxy. <laughs> there was no galaxy. There was no cavemen. There was no ecosystem. It was just God. There wasn't no animals, plants, which is part of the ecosystem. There was nothing. God. Use me as an example. I'm God. Just here. And he always have been there. And that went on for, if you want to put, try to put time on it, you can't. Because there was no time. It was just God. And then you read in verse 2, the same was in the beginning with God. What beginning? You look up that word beginning, it means the, the start of life. As we know it. As we believe, start, start to see things. I want y'all to really, really catch that. Jesus is saying... Go back over to the book of John, chapter 17. He said, verse, verse 5 again, Father, I want you to glorify me with you. What is Jesus doing? He's putting himself on the same plan field as God. Look at the verse. I want y'all, because Jesus, in this prayer that he's talking to God, if you were to hear me pray something similar to that, you would think that I'm crazy. 
Some of you all, if you if some some if you if you knew that you could pray like this, uh, you put yourself on the same playing field as God, and somebody heard you, they would think you crazy. They would say you're trying to be a god. You ain't no god. You're just a regular old person. You're a regular old human being. Who you think you is? You ain't God. And Jesus is saying, I want you to glorify me, Father. The same way you get glorified. With the glory which I had. This is Jesus. That Jesus is one of the few times that Jesus said, I. <laughs> I had with thee. The word thee means you. Before the world, what? Was. So now here Jesus is saying, hey. I was there in the beginning before it was anything. Before there was anything. I was with you, God. So now we begin to see. We we learned a few weeks, we learned a few weeks ago in the book of Revelation. Remember where it says in the book of Revelation that uh when, when that's when we're gonna see a man on his horse and he's gonna have a vesture and his clothes dipped, and it, on the side of it it says um the word of God. John chapter 14. John chapter 14. I mean, now go back to John chapter 1. Not John chapter 1, I'm sorry. John chapter 1, verse 14. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father full of grace and truth. Who is this word? Who is this word? It's Jesus. Jesus. That's Jesus right there. This very same word who was with God at the very beginning became flesh. That flesh has a name. Go read in the book of Matthew. John, when the angel came to, uh, the angel came to uh, Joseph and said, Joseph, take on Mary. She's going to give birth to a son and you're going to name him Jesus. When the angel showed up over shot, over shot of Mary, Mary, you finna give birth to a child. Well, how can these things be? I ain't never had sex with no man. He says, the Holy Spirit is overshadowing you. You're going to give birth to a savior of the world and you gonna name him Jesus. Jesus. So now here the word is in flesh form and that flesh's name is what? Jesus. Jesus. Now here Jesus years later <laughs> talking back to the father, talking to the father, it's talking back to the father, talking to the father, not talking back, I'm talking back to the father. To no, he's talking back to him. <laughs> talking to the Father, and he said, I want you to glorify me the same kind of glorification that I had with you from the very beginning, before there was anything. Question. I know this is Jesus saying this, but can we pray this prayer? I want you to be very, very serious to think about that. Because, think about, we've been talking about spiritual gifts. This is one of the gifts that we have in today's time. And some of us don't even know. <clears throat> Why? We have this gift because it was given to us by God. Uh-huh, I got y'all's attention now. I ain't never heard no stuff like that. Think about it. We just got through teaching on spirit, soul, and body. And before that, what were we teaching on? You were birthed. You were birthed into this kingdom. God birthed you into this kingdom. John chapter 3. John chapter 3. I ain't going to spend a whole lot of time right here. But we spent a whole, what, several months teaching on just this principle right here. John chapter 3. 
It says, <clears throat> verse 1, there was a man named, there was a man of Pharisee named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher from, came from, come from God. But no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with him. Jesus answered and said unto, unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be what? Born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus says unto him, how can, how can a man be born when he is old? Can he, enter into, can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That which is born of what? Flesh, flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is what? Spirit. Marvel not, I say unto thee, ye must be born again. Jesus, if you go read down to the rest of this, uh, you're going to read down to the rest of this, you'll pick up what Nicodemus said, how, how, how is this going to happen? How, how can these things be? And Jesus came back and asked, he said, hey, uh, you're a master, you're a teacher of the law, uh, of the Old Testament rules and regulations. How do you not know it? It's the better question. How could you not know it? He said, I was putting, I was implementing this principle all throughout the Old Testament. Jesus said, you are, you've been birthed by God. The day you received Jesus Christ as your Lord, you were birthed by God. God birthed you spiritually. He gave birth to you. Y'all need to get that. You're not getting Y'all looking at me with these eyeballs. Now I can sense it through the internet too. You, you have been birthed by God. You've been birthed. You are God's child. Don't just look at it, I'm a child of God. You are God's child. Different, different aspects from it. You are God's child, not just a child of God. No, you have been birthed by God. If that does not catapult your confidence level to a whole nother level, I don't know what's going to do it. You have been birthed by God. Take that. Say that to yourself over and over and over again till your mind grabs hold to it and you can, you just, it becomes that stronghold in your head. You have been birthed by God. And since you have been birthed by God, since you are a spirit and you know you are a spirit and you have been birthed by God, spiritually speaking, God sees you on the same playing field as him. Oh my goodness. Come on, people. Come on. Watch it, watch it. Go back over to you, you and John. John got a hold of this message. John talked this, John, throughout the scriptures, reading through the book of John, John caught a hold of this man. Go back over. John chapter 17. <clears throat> Look what it says. Oh, goodness, great, goodness, great, goodness, great. He says, uh, Verse, drop all the way down. Verse 9. I pray for them. I pray not for the world, for I pray not for the world, but for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine. Now, if you go read the book of John, back on John chapter 3, it said Jesus came into the world not to destroy the world, not to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. The world, you were part of that world once before. You were. You were part of that world. When somebody came and ministered to you about the Lord Jesus Christ, you got snatched out of that world. But then you were placed into the kingdom of God. All of us came out of that world system. To the, the deliverance to come out of that world system, Jesus is the answer. You confessing Jesus Christ as your Lord snatches you out of that system. But here go. You don't just get snatched out of that system. You are also now placed into the kingdom. Watch this. So here when you read verse chapter verse 9, Jesus said, I'm not praying for the world. I'm the answer to the world's problems. If they receive me, I got a special prayer. 
I got a special prayer for people who believe in me. What's his prayer? But for them which thou hast given me, for they are thine, and all are mine, are, 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 and all mine are thine, and all mine are thine, and thine are mine. And I am glorified where? In them. In them. There you go, sister. That's what I'm talking about. Get a hold of that stuff. In them. In them. Oh, goodness gracious, this is some good stuff right here. And now I am no more in the world, even though he standing right there on planet Earth. He's calling those things that be not as though they were. He said, he said I'm, not long, I'm no longer in here. But these are in the world, and I am come to thee. Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me, that they may be one as we are. Everybody say after me. Repeat after me. I am one with God. I am on the same playing field with God. Why? Because God did it. Some of y'all got to get that, man. You on the same playing field with God. Because God did it. Oh, good. That's some good stuff right there. God did this. Did, did y'all read it right there? Read it again so you can get a hold to it. Look what it is. Holy Father, keep through thy own name those whom thou hast given me that they may be one as we are one. Oh, goodness gracious. Here you go. Let's, 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 let's just read the rest of this, man. This is getting even better. He says, while I, was in, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Those that thou givest me, I have kept, and none of them, and none of them is lost, but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. The son of perdition, if you was to go read it, is referring to it's referring to Judas, Judas Iscariot. Jesus said that I've lost the son of perdition, but he's not referring to Judas himself. He's referring to the spirit that Jude, that, that overtook Judas Iscariot to betray Jesus. I personally believe Judas Iscariot is in glory right now. I personally believe that. I personally believe that because if you go read scripture, other scriptures, it says that Judas, he repented of the things that he did. Now, yes, Jesus did go, the John, Judas Iscariot did go kill himself, and for centuries we've heard as uh, suicide is, is a way of um, you know, losing your salvation, but you can't read no one that in scripture. It, it doesn't say that. It's, it does say the unpardonable sin, there is one unpardonable sin, and the only unpardonable sin is Jesus. And it, Jesus is the one who gets you born again. And if you don't believe in Jesus, that's only a pardonable sin. You can you can repent from it. You can repent from it, but you but but you can't be forgiven of it. How could you not be forgiven of uh, rejecting Jesus? Because God sent him into. He is the answer to the world. Make sense? Makes sense to me. He says here. He says. Well, it, it, it go, oh, I'm stuttering now. I'm, 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 I'm excited about these things right here, man. Uh, son of perdition, he said, and now come I to thee, and these things I speak in the world, that they might be foot, and that that might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Jesus said, I want my kind of joy fulfilled in them. Don't all the way down. Look, look what it says, verse 20. He says, Neither pray I for these alone, but for them also which shall believe on me through their word. Their word. Their word. Jesus is not praying for the disciples and the people that believe on him and saying that they are on the same playing field with him. He's also saying to the people like you and I and other people, who can, anybody who came after Jesus, I'm also praying for them. That, that's including me too, right? And that include you? Now me, 
through their word. What's your word? Your confession. You confess in Jesus Christ as Lord. Why? Verse 21. That they bring in everybody who was with Jesus at that time and everybody who was uh, up to now, even on up into the rapture of the church. That they all may be one as thou, Father, art in me and I in thee. That they also, underline that, underline that, underline that, underline that. That they also may be one in us. Please underline that. You need to catch hold of that. God uh, in us. That the world may believe that thou hast sent me. All of this, God is saying, I'm bringing all of you guys in. I'm making you all equal and putting you on the same playing field with me based on what I've done. I know you couldn't do this. I'm doing this, putting you on the same playing field with me. Why? So we can go snatch more people out of the world. Think about how many people died and going to hell right now. And here we are, won't even walk in who, our authority, who we are. We, we won't even step up and be who we are. Ephesians. Come on, I got like four minutes. Go to Ephesians. <clears throat> Where are you, Pastor? Ephesians, Ivory. <laughs> y'all ever tickle yourself? I do. Ephesians. Ephesians. Chapter. same page. That's the way you kind of see it on jobs and stuff like that. Everybody getting on one accord. It's referring to God and man. God and man. God and man. God says, I need you to get in agreement with me. It ain't based on what you did. It's based on what I did. And I put you, I want you to be able to walk in this. That's a good start right there. Think about it. God been wanting us to walk on the same level as him. Since day one. Well, Pastor, if that is true, how come I can how come I, if I lay hands on the sick, they don't recover so quickly? How come Jesus manifested real quick? I don't know, but I do know it's not gonna prevent me from laying hands on the sick. Jesus said, greater work, he said, these works that you see me do, you will do also in greater works. I'm ready to start tapping into something that I, I want to just I want to do just some of the things that Jesus did. Look, 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 look what he said. Look, look what he said. He says, verse, verse, uh, verse, uh, oh my goodness. Verse 19. And we read this verse before already. It says, Now therefore ye are no more strangers and foreigners, but what? Fellow citizens with the saints and of the household of God. Everybody say, I am a citizen in the kingdom. 
I am a citizen in the kingdom. I'm a citizen. I'm a citizen. Last verse. Last verse. Ephesians. You there in Ephesians? Uh, goodness gracious. Oh my goodness, because the Spirit of God showed it to me. Ephesians. chapter 2 